So we jump into part two of this. So in the first part, we just looked at the sheath colors. We looked at the construction of the cables. We'll look at in this one, maybe in a little bit more detail, maybe some of the elements of the gland and the tools to make it off and maybe even the clips as well as we look at it. We'll try and keep this to about 10 minutes as well. So we have got, and I said in the first video, we have got videos on the channel that will come out on how to make MI off, how to test it, et cetera. This is just the lesson that on the hottest day of the year so far that us three are having together. So when we looked at the tools, we looked at some stripping tools that I used on my videos and I looked at predominantly what you think would be the easier ones to do, which was this one here, which is the joy stripper, agreed? Yeah. And the joy stripper around the outside of the barrel had some letters and numbers to help indicate which cable to use. So if I read one to you, it says 2L 2.5. So that one there says 2L 2.5. What does the two stand for? Remember, John? Um, okay, I'll go, I'll go. No, two, no, number of conductors. So yeah. two conductors, L. What does L um, stand for? Light gauge, yeah, light gauge, yeah, light gauge. So two core light gauge, and the next one's two point five. That's the conductor size. Yeah. So when I showed you in in the first part of our, our lesson, this one here, which was one mil, so that would be set this up. You'd have to rotate the barrel round. So there's a little screw in there. You undo that and you rotate it round until you find the appropriate two L one. So two core light gauge one mil, and then you position the appropriate barrel there. So you can see all those barrels in there and you position it appropriately against the blade, which is just there to strip it. Okay, and it's it's reasonably tricky to get it right first time in order that you get the blade in. But once you've done it a couple of times, you can almost get it every time. So when students are asked to move the barrel position to the blade, we end up having it digging in and all the rest of it where they don't quite set it in the right position. And again, when I showed you the video, I put a little bit of petroleum jelly onto the actual cable with the stripping tools to make it easier to strip. So when people on YouTube actually get those released, you'll see that we put effectively Vaseline on it. So that was my joy stripper. OK, and it has a blade in it and the blade can go blunt and is restricted by the size of the holes in which size MI cables we can use. You can buy bigger versions of this, but you need to buy another tool. Joy stripper. Again, these come in different sizes. This is the smallest joy stripper they make. I showed it on the video. It's got a little clamp there, which you don't tighten down, do you, John? That's super loose when you watch the video. Yeah. And you've got a, a, a wheeling blade here. So this here is the blade and our cable. And you'll see it in the video when it comes out, comes straight through there. Again, it's limited by the size of the jaws here. So how big we can make it to bring a cable through. OK, so that is a rotary stripper. OK, so both of them have blades. The problem with blades is they, they can come blunt and they're restricting the size. I did a video. Didn't I use one of these bad boys in one of my videos? Yeah, key stripper. Yes. Uh, for the older people amongst us, which uh, I'd like to suggest that we're probably all in that region, where would we have seen a miniature version of these maybe when we were a lot younger? Oh, God, I'm the only one who knows. Corn beef. <laughs> thank, you, thank you, John. Thank you. You must have seen it in an old antiques book. Yeah, so spam or corned beef. Yeah, so we, we just ended up winding it around the actual tin, didn't we, to bring it off. Yeah. This is the key stripper. Is there a blade in there? Uh, no, not a blade, no, no. no. So this was just a straight piece of metal. I bent the end over and put a slot in it. So I could do the same with a screwdriver. And this can do any size mineral insulated cable known to man because it's just using that technique that I showed in the video. Did you see my technique where I just twist, twist, twist? Really yeah. easy to use. The only thing is you do need a blade in order to wring it off at the end. So we had that at the base end where I had to break it off. That video will come out onto YouTube in the coming months. And is I show all three techniques, don't I, John? I show yep. joy stripper. No, I didn't. Let's do that again. Rotary stripper, yep. joy stripper. And I show the key stripper, the three ways in which yep. you can strip cable. OK, so Grandmas, if I think I might send you those links privately. If you send me a text, I'll send you those links privately to have a look at those. So okay. that's, how to, that's how to strip it. John, can you remember either of these tools, what these were? Uh, I can't remember the correct term for them, no. Okay, that's the crimping tool. And I showed you how we would put the cap on to squash it down so the compound squirted out. That was the crimping tool. Yeah. Okay, and again, it's limited by its size. So we're going to do certain size mineral insulated cables. And that's the pot wrench. 
I think I didn't really use much of the pot wrench. I think I used my pliers in the end, didn't I? That yeah. clamps onto the pot. We'll show the bits in a minute that are the different bits. So we've got that. One thing I probably didn't show in the video, hopefully I did, but did I show you one of these bad boys? Here. It's got those wheels in it. No, I don't think you did, no. Okay. The idea of this is it's a straightening tool. So you end up opening this out, which is easier said than done when you're Got a set of headphones on, let's open it off the camera. And then you clamp it around the actual conductors. Right. Okay. Like so. And what you do is you pull it through the wheeled system so the cable can be pulled backwards and forwards through the wheel system. Right. And what it does, it takes out any minor kinks. So as I run that through, see that running through, pull it off. See how straight that is. Yeah, yeah, dead straight. So when you wind this off uh, a drum, it's really nice because it stays in position. So look how self-rigid that is. We know the clipping distance will be miles apart because obviously it's self-supporting. And we'll look at that in the notes. But if you take it off the drum really neatly, you can dress it beautifully to the surface. What you don't want to be doing is start putting really sharp kinks in it that you've got to try and straighten out. You can use, believe it or not, a block of wood and a rubberized end of a hammer, not a complete rubber hammer, you know, it's a joke off Batman, isn't it? but you know, a hammer that has either a, a, a softer plastic or rubber end, and you can tap it against the block of wood. I apologize, all my kit for that is obviously at college. So block of wood, and you can hammer it, just gently tap it straight, or use a straightening tool, which is really just effectively a set of wheels, which it runs over in order that you straighten out small kinks in the actual cable itself. Um, let's go for the gland next. So this is the gland. It has one of the, I'm going to ask you this one, John, you ready? Yeah. From last time. What is this, John? That's a shroud. Well done. Well done. It's obviously for red MI. They do them in orange. They do them in white. Uh, if you have no PVC on it, you don't need a shroud. And this is the gland. Okay. That's our gland. Okay. Can you remember any of the bits of this, John, from your video that you watched? Yeah. I remember about this bit and then uh there's some numbers on the back of the gland isn't there oh, yeah. yes so yeah let's have a look at that first then so the gland says i'll read it out to you <laughs> i'll say i'll read it out to you with my great eyes it says 2l 1.5 no it doesn't it says 2l1 2l1, 2L1. what does the two stand for two conductors what does l stand for Line. H. good and what does one stand for Come on, Ramos. Come on, Crash. What's the one stand for? One. Yes. One millimeter squared. One millimeter squared. So, so I match exactly the same as the armoured. You find out the credentials of the cable and you match the gland to it. So this is one millimeter squared light gauge to core. That means that this gland comprising of gland body, gland nuts, and the bit you never get to use at college, but I did in my video, is the compression olive. The compression olive. What's? Can you remember what the compression olive's job is? Is that to make a CPC? Yes. Look at that bad boy there. So gland body, gland nut, and the compression olive has been crimped onto there. So in other words, when we tighten the two together, it's squashed that olive down. So now if you watch it, I can drop that down. But nothing else drops down. Nothing comes down because that olive is compressed into position. Yeah. However, the pot on here, which we'll look at in a minute, actually has a CPC connection. And you can see how long I've had these and how long I've been teaching because the one I've kept has got old cable colours pre-2004, which dates me terribly, I would suggest. OK, so that was what the compression olive is there for. You don't need the following, but you can. So if I look at the actual um, first style of oh, – I've got one out. Yeah, I did. First style of pot. So this is the pot. Remember, it's got that thread inside there I showed you in the video, itself tapping onto the actual cable. We fill it full of compound and we put the disc on. And in this case, it's a two conductor disc. So we've got the pot, which also is in this case 2L1. It's got the thread on there and the cap. But you can get other pot styles. This is for the same size cable. So this is still 2L1, but they've welded in an earth tag so that is permanently connected to the pot to increase the the connection to the cpc 
So we're relying on this case sometimes just on the compression olive if we weren't using an earth tail pot. But in this case, it's got an earth tail pot on it. Still exactly the same looking for the right pot. The extra conductor isn't taken into consideration when obviously using the uh, description. So it's still 2L1 because the cables have got two conductors in, but they've welded it on. The reason we only do a couple of ends on this at college is it, it, when you've never made it off before and you're introducing more and more conductors, it becomes tricky. They go all the way up to 19 core. So I've got for you a seven core. And unfortunately, I left it at college. I'll be honest with you for a while. If you look quickly, there's only six there. A student broke them off for me. That was nice of them. So seven core MI, gland nut, gland body. And believe it or not, in that section just in there is half the compression olive. So that's what we've got there. And how much room have you not got in order that those cables don't clash in there? You've got to fill that full of a compound. That's pretty tight, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. That is pretty tight. So when we've got two conductors, everyone's sweating. I used to make my students off in years one, two, and three of teaching do a seven core MI. That puts the pressure on you. Okay, so that's that. Can you remember what the type of clips are? These ones are called P-clips. Okay, P they're P-clips. Yep. So if I look at one here, that's uh, how they come. They, there's other style of clips as well. I've only got the P-clips here. We've got an orange one. We've got a white one. They do red ones, etc. Do you know what the material is inside that P-clip? It's very, very stiff in order to, to obviously wrap it around the cable. It's really stiff. What do you think material inside that PVC covering is? What do you think's in there? Aluminium. Steel, aluminium. Yep. I've stripped a bit off there. What do you think that is? Hard copper. to see, Prob. Yeah, it's copper. It's copper. We wouldn't want a far alarm cable to premature collapse, even though that this is not the rules that we're looking at now under the 18th edition. If you've got a cable at, say, six, seven, eight, nine thousand degrees C, do you want it to collapse? Do you want it to move away from the structure? No, it would it would destroy the cable. So, of course, you're going to hold your cable in position using a copper based uh, fix in this case, a P clip in order that the, the cable doesn't pull itself away from the actual structure itself. So again, it's held in place. So premature collapsing of fire alarm systems has been in place for, for almost eternity, that we don't want them to move under red hot conditions. We would identify our ends of our conductors as shown in the video with some PVC sleeving, okay? And that can be blue and brown. We saw earlier that I had from my back in the good old days, I obviously use red and black. And you can just cover it in in just black now and identify the one with blue and brown as we would maybe when we we're doing steel armored and things like that or sy flex sy flex then we had black conductors and we just identified the ends so that's sort of a, a whistle stop tour of the kit and the gland are, are we comfortable with those pieces of information yeah i will send you the videos grandma it was it was worth trying to catch up with those three they were they're quite you know i'm yeah. quite proud of the videos i did on those so ju just to summarize them we've got um conductors from two from two conductors all the way up to 19 with mi it can go all the way up to 150 millimeters squared if we go into heavy gauge light gauge is between one and 10 mil so a 10 mil conductor is the largest you can get in light gauge it's um we looked at the construction of the cable in a previous video we talked about the magnesium oxide uh 800 degrees c and copper at a thousand so the two videos tie ourselves together that means we can populate our notes now with ease everybody else who's maybe got to this moment in the video is now we're saying goodbye to them these notes aren't available either on the efix apprentice hub i don't think i put them on there um so if i have i mean feel free to check but off the top of me i'm not 100 certain so we're going to carry on to our notes and we'd like to thank you for watching us uh, as we press on on the hottest day of the year so far